Hey guys, how you doing? Bob with Refuge here. And today we're gonna do an interesting little field test, if you would, um, on combat pants. We see combat pants evolving throughout uh, all of time, coming through BDUs to the G3 style, and now we're looking at a new pair of combat pants from Born Primitive. Um, this is their op pant. And so what we're gonna be testing is to see how does this thing do in terms of masking blood? Um, what does it look like? Does, can you see a good blood signature coming through it or does it hide it really well? Um, something that we look for as medics is, you know, if we can, if we can identify where a critical bleed is through sight, um, that's gonna help us in triage, right? And then I have some other pants to compare it to. So we've got some Marpat BDUs. Um, so we're gonna be looking at the Marpat BDUs. These are just like Rothko BDUs here. And then we also have some G3 combat pants and uh, some knee pads. Get out of here. Don't need no stinking knee pads. And these are in the Ranger green. And so I was trying to get gray in these. They didn't have gray so I can compare color to color. But still, we should be able to get a pretty good picture off of what this looks like from the Ranger green. And so how we're gonna do this is we've got our blood simulator here through Focus, and we're just gonna simulate a you know partially severed artery, right? Uh, so we're gonna have good pulsing and spraying, and we're gonna tie that to simulate basically the leg at, at the bottom of the pant, and see you know, how long does it take to get a good signature of blood, what does that actually look like, and uh, yeah, how does it read through the pants, right? And then what we'll do is, is uh, we'll kinda analyze the three together. I'm not looking to use a whole liter of blood on each pant, but if it's masking really well, we might have to just to get a good signature. So we're gonna start with the, uh, we'll start with the Marpat BDUs and we'll move to the G3s and then we'll move to the Born Primitive Op pants. So we'll set these guys down here so that way they don't get all nasty and we'll get going. So now we've got a simulated calf, right? And uh, you know, lower leg portion. I'm gonna go ahead and glove up because I know I'm gonna be touching weird fluids. And I just, you know, it's a good practice, right? And now all we're gonna do is simulate a pulsing bleed with the focus bleed trainer, right? And so we'll go ahead and start working through. So you can see right here, you have a little bit of bleed through, but still not a lot of action there. We'll leave some of that pressure. And still no read through whatsoever as we work the bottle. And that's concerning, right? Like we want to see that blood if it's uh, if it's leaking through, especially with this directionally spraying right onto that pant leg. And so now what we'll kind of look at is how it's reading on the bottom. So you have a little bit of read right here, but you know we've got a good amount of spray coming through the pant. You can hear it spraying, but still it's not coming through the pant leg whatsoever, which is a challenge, right? Because we want to keep moisture out um, when you're operational. It's nice to have moisture resistant pants, but if you're dealing with a critical bleed like this, we'll go ahead and show you guys the inside of this pant leg here. And you can tell this whole wound cube. I'll show you guys how much blood this is hiding deep inside there. And so still you can barely see on the pant, any sort of blood, right? So this is from the outside that was just poured out. And so if you look on the inside of the pant leg, right, that's where you're starting to see all of that bleed, right? And so if you were walking up to a casualty, um, you might not see this realistically, right? Um, and so that's why it's so important that we're doing sweeps and rakes upon assessing our casualty, right? So. We're doing a casualty assessment. Got to do sweeps and rakes and see what's going on. I'll try to do a couple more times in the same location because we're starting to get a little pocket here.
we're still not getting that positive read unless it's at the bottom. So something to note is if you're wearing really thick BDUs, know that a lot of that blood is gonna pool on the bottom like so. So you can see all that printing there. Once again, I'll take this out and I'll show you how much blood we have internal here, right? And it's just pooling inside of the pant leg. And I'll show you guys what this looks like inside the pants, right? On the outside, pretty clean, right? It's not the worst on the bottom where it was pooling, really rough. But where the actual wound was right here, we just have a little spot, right? From the pulsing and so it's running up against that pant leg and it's coming all across the side. So that's a quick look at what uh, a major bleed, right? Simulated with just, you know, probably 10 pulses, realistically. Um, extended pulses, of course. Uh, that's gonna be kind of what that looks like. And really interesting testing versus a BDU. So we're gonna move away from the Rothko BDUs and we'll go to the G3 combat pants. Um, there's a bunch of different brands. Uh, Cry Precision obviously is the one who started us down this path. Uh, and now there's, there's a ton of different companies out there that make this type of version of pant. And so one of the reasons guys like this so much is one, it was like knee pad integration into pants, which was huge. But then you also have all these adjustments on the bottom, on the knee, right? And then dude, all the pockets for fun times. So we're gonna go ahead and open these up. We'll get this, uh, this leg in there and we're gonna see what it looks like to simulate a bleed with the G3 pants. And so off top, this comes much faster already. One pump and it's coming through versus the Rothko, which was not the case. Rothko took quite a few pumps to come through. And so if you look, right, it's still struggling, but it's, it's much easier to see. And I know that, this, that the Rothko is a little bit darker, so that's something to keep in mind, right? Like we probably could have done multicam and made everybody super happy that we use multicam. So kind of see how much is coming through the bottom. Not really seeing much in the bottom. We'll pull this out. So that way you guys can see, this is doing a really good job of masking already. And so, so you guys can quickly look what this is gonna seem like in the inside. We've got a good amount of blood coming out the bottom and you can't see pretty much on either side yet. Almost complete masking right there. And so what's happening internally right now, you guys can see so that way you have a good picture as to how the device works. So that's what's actually happening inside these pants right now. So the fact that you're not seeing this throughout the whole pant is pretty concerning, right? But we also have to understand that that's just, you know, the nature of moisture resistant pants. Same good squeeze. Still almost nothing coming through. And this is interesting, I've never done this before, so this is an interesting test for me too, kind of thinking about it. Um, I've seen some severed wounds with cries, uh, and they do hide quite a bit. Uh, it depends on what color, like your blues, your blacks, rough, really rough. Black multicam, everybody wants to wear black multicam, but buddy, just like black clothing will, it hides blood. It really, really does. So you're starting to get some here, but realistically, like this is where the wound channel is. And so as I put pressure on, you can start to see the bleed, right? And so if I did a good sweep or rake, I came across, I'm like, okay, here we go, right? I could run shears, cut this up, all right? And expose the leg. And that's gonna tell a whole new story for us because if you look, again, it's running up the leg too. We've got a good amount of blood throughout the whole pant, 
right? And so this is where it was sitting right here. And so that's a lot better indicator on the sitting than what I would call, you know, the BDU. Um, that tells a good story right there. So we would know for sure we have to work shears up this, but showing on the inside, I mean, this thing is soaked. Um, it took a ton and it's just hiding it. Like I could probably wring it out. Uh, maybe not, wow. But, and it's still just absolutely caked internally with blood, right? And so, uh, in my opinion, definitely better than the BDU pant. Um, still not awesome, not telling a great story. I'm excited to see how the Born Primitive pants go, uh, just given that they're a lighter material. I think they're gonna do a better job. Um, but I could be wrong. I've been wrong before, so. All right, and now we've got the op pants from Born Primitive. Um, I'm gonna be honest, guys, I really want these to do well um, for a couple reasons. One, I have been converted to the Born Primitive team. Uh, I, I'm wearing them right now, and they've been my go-to pant since I got some. Uh, mainly because they're not as bulky as G3s, they're more low profile, so you can wear these pants every single day but still have like operational capability of storage. The knee pads are internal, so you can put them in yourself, you can take them out, but they're not nearly as bulky as like a lot of the knee pads for your standard combat pants, and they're really, really comfortable, um, and they're way more breathable. So I'm really hoping that these do well. I have almost no idea what to expect here, um, but we're gonna see. In terms of comfort though, they definitely beat the other two. So now we've got to where it's not too loose or too tight, right? Still, you know, it's not like a skinny jean or anything like that, same as the other ones. And we'll just start working that blood. Now I know that this is gray versus a range of green, so we might have a little bit of difference in color. I'm gonna take that into account. But still, you know, we didn't see good pooling, like actual pooling from the cry till like the 10th pump, you know. We didn't see it really much with the, uh, the BDU till we started pouring it out. Um, and that, the BDU pants really held a lot of blood internally. And so I'll be interested to see kind of what this does. All right, here goes nothing. Okay, so off top, we already have a pretty good mark and a pretty good indicator. That's nice. All right, another good spray here. Yeah, so that's bleeding through much more. And you're already starting to see a pool around too. I think part of that has to do with the color, but we're two pumps in right two good sprays in and we're already seeing a much better story of a critical bleed um, and i've recommended these pants to quite a few first responders because of the comfort because of the knee pad integration but now seeing that it's already telling a good story of a critical bleed yeah that's that's much better so we're three pumps in and we're telling an obvious circular story here of that bleed you have printing and showing on this side as well We'll lift her up. Oh yeah, right through, right? And so, kind of show, not nearly as much blood uh, as the other one, and we're still, we're still telling a good story, which is what we want the pants to do. Like, if we can come up to a casualty, it gives us good time to where we know like, oh, visually I can see blood there. I know I need to expose that and work, right? Versus I'm sweeping and raking. Like obviously we're still gonna go through our casualty assessment. We're still gonna do sweeps and rakes. But if I've got a critical bleed and I can go straight to that, right? If the patient's unconscious or something to that regard, they're not able to tell me, oh, I got shot in the leg or whatever it may be. Um, that's gonna be super important. So that's another good pump there, right? And, uh, there's definitely some pooling inside the pant leg, uh, which is to be expected. There's water resistance in this pant, right? But it's telling a really good story here. Which is awesome. I'm so happy, I'm so relieved. 
I really wanted these guys to win. And I guess you can't really win because it's preference, right? But still, we look and look at, look on the backside. So we're on our fourth or fifth pump here. And if we roll that leg, we're already deep showing true pooling here. So we would know, hey, we've got an arterial leak going on in these pants. Um, so trauma naked, go ahead and expose. We'll show the blood, right? And that's nice. It's absorbing through, right? And so show here, get this leg out and remind you guys what's going on here. You know, like we'll show you kind of what that could look like internally. This is, this is our backside here. So we're on the fifth pump and we've already got good positive reading as to what that's going to look like for, uh, for blood. Um, really important for a first responder, being able to tell where you're bleeding, what's going on, right? Whether you were in a car accident, whether you, you know, took a ricochet, took a round, um, fell, that happens all the time. In terms of like reading and telling the story, the born primitive op pant is 100% winning, um, 100%. It's, it's definitely um, a thinner material. And so if you're looking for something that's super duper thick, uh, that's probably not for you. It's got good uh, flexibility and like it's got a good stretch to the material. So, you know, like there's, a, there's some give to it, which is nice because if you're, if you're crouching down, if you're moving or if you're fighting or whatever it may be, that's, that's what you want. You know, you want some agility in your pants, right? Another good thing, price point, um, you know, everybody knows BDUs, you can get them for like 40, 50 bucks online, super cheap. You can get the knockoff cries for probably like 80, maybe a hundred bucks, but they'll probably fail. Normal cries, like actual name brand, talking like three to five, 400 bucks, depending on where you get them, if you get them used. The op pants, I think they're like 200 bucks. So you're getting, you're supporting a good American company and you're getting a better deal for, in my opinion, a better functioning pant for first responders. So um, I don't have like a discount code or anything. I just uh, am trying to give you guys the best information possible. If you guys like videos like this, if you want to see us testing more gear, if you want to see us, you know, doing more TACMED related testing, let us know in the comments below. As always, uh, we appreciate you guys and please, please, Carry an F and tourniquet.